everybody. Welcome to Down to Date. I have a special guest in the podcast studio today. This is my ex-boyfriend, boyfriend, Sam Meyerson. I am so excited yeah. and honored that you would ask me to do this. I feel it literally it's been five years since we've dated. It's crazy to think it's yes. been that much time. 2014, 15, somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah, it was a while. It's like when I first moved to Los Angeles from going to school in San Francisco and Sam and I actually met on a dating app. So I definitely want to get more into like the dating apps. There's a lot of. Yeah. Sam is very opinionated about oh. dating apps. <laughs> it's good. There is. a Yeah. But uh, no. But what I was going to say is the dating app we met on. Oh, yeah. Very different today than what it was really? in 2014. I literally haven't been on a dating app. I mean, I was just in a relationship, so I haven't been on a dating app in years. Like, yes. yeah, so I've heard. So we're going to go, we'll go into like diving into the treachery of dating apps and all of that. Um, but first, uh, can you be friends with your ex? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> um, I mean, we like I think we've done a good job. Yeah, absolutely. Of like maintaining a friendship, like yeah. even though we've dated before. And I think it's kind of like a taboo thing. Why do you think we've been able to stay friends? I think because we both are mature people that respect one another. But also, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I think everyone should stay friends. I mean, under certain circumstances after their relationship, hopefully they break up amicably and as we yeah. did. And it's not. We never like there was no Nobody I don't think there was ever like other. a lot of hate. Yeah, no, none <laughs> of that. I think that's like the road of no return yeah. when you like abandon trust. Yeah. So but yeah, so we met on a dating app. I guess we'll just go into our story. Okay. You can tell our story, Sam. Yeah. I want to hear how you I want to hear how you tell our story. It was a warm summer morning and <laughs> <laughs> we met on Tinder, but this was when tinder was very different and like this was when it just kind of came out and it was legitimately like a dating app it was like people were new. on there to meet someone i yeah. mean today it's i feel like it's just like a hookup app that's so interesting but, because there were apps like dating apps out there that you would see as like hookup apps yeah but now i feel like there's just so many that is they're so saturated with people and mm -hmm. there's such a short attention span that it just yeah um but i mean i felt like most people on there back then were like actually looking to date yeah you know? we were we were looking for like a serious yeah. committed relationship so we were chatting and then decided to go out on a date yeah you were fresh from san francisco i was fresh you were you were only here for like two weeks yeah yeah um and i think you had recently been in a relationship before that too yeah so you weren't looking no, I was Quite not. so hard for a relationship. That's usually when you find someone, when you're not really looking, you're kind of just playing the field. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I yeah, I think it was kind of this, no, maybe I was looking a bit more for a relationship at that point. Yeah. But. Um, You've been swiping. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, at that moment in life, I was looking to settle down for a little relationship. But then we, I took you to no vacancy yes that was the first day speakeasy yes that was impressive i was impressed by speakeasy yeah i think you thought i was like leading you down an alley to murder you and i was like that's true though because when you go in you go in like this little it's like a stairway right well and then it's, you turn down the road and it looks like there's nothing down that road yeah and then you and i was like i met this guy go. online i might die but, but i didn't but then it was a very nice date yeah yeah and I think we it worked pretty quickly after that and the breakup. I mean, I feel like at that age. We were young. Yeah. Uh, well, the whole thing was too that like I I don't think you ever got a moment to like be settled in LA and it's then, so true. I mean you didn't even have a place. You you were living at your sister's yeah. place and then like, kind of at your place too. Yeah. So I, I was a about drifter. That. I yeah, was a couch you were, surfer. You, you, you moved in a bunch of stuff to my place. Yeah. And that was very quick too. Very soon. But I was just trying to help you get settled, get get you on your feet. But it you can't like really, you know, facilitate you in that. Into you know? it. I think the one thing that I learned and I think we learn a lot from every single relationship we've been in. But one of the main things that I learned in our relationship was Communication, first of all, mm -hmm. extremely important. We were just talking about this. Um, but when you do rush things and it is getting like it's really overwhelming, 
um, just to like I, you just can't, I, I feel like rushing it almost made me like freak out. Yeah. So I was going through like that kind of phase. Um, At the beginning, I mean, it. I admit it was me that kind of like. I, I well we both kind of hit it off so well yeah. at the beginning that it was just like hey we need to give this a shot like but yeah. you you were pretty adamant about being like I came out here to like not date for a second and stuff like that and just like kind of like see what was yeah and that definitely didn't work me saying oh yeah I, I don't want to do it I think the more you try to push it away the well, more it becomes also, something yeah, that like, I mean it, there was along. a genuine connection yeah. um I've, I've always been in the stance that like if you have a genuine connection with someone it's difficult to be like to not go for it you know yeah. under whatever circumstances there are but yeah but but we're i'm friends a romantic now. this is true <laughs> sam's romantic ladies but uh. we're friends now which i think is it's really important i i feel like once you care about someone it's really difficult to not care about them ever again sure. you're always going to have a you know a part part of them in your heart um i mean we both know each other's whole families too and that's like true that, so. once you get the families involved yes yeah. Don't get the families involved until it's serious, because then, then it's that makes step. the breakup even harder. Yeah. yeah. So now that we both are in the single world now, I'm new. I'm new to the single world. Um, you ha- have been using dating apps, and you said they changed a lot. Oh my god! Yeah. I want to hear your opinion about dating apps. Okay. Well, I know this is going to be. This is, we we discussed. And you have a lot of opinions. Yeah. Now I'm only using one dating app just because. It, I feel like every single dating app is like a different platform for, I don't know. <laughs> Tinder, I feel like now is just a hookup app. And Do you it's feel like you can really and... find a relationship on a dating app? Yeah, I think if if it's two people that are genuinely looking for something and like that's what they set out for. But unfortunately, I think it's a, you know, it's a gray area. Yeah. Well, okay. The one that I'm on right now is Raya. Okay. Um, I've heard I've heard that Raya is really difficult to get onto. The I think that's like kind of the, you know, shine to it is that exclusivity is a proponent. Um but you have to get recommended by a friend and then they have to accept you once you link your Instagram. Okay, so it's, so it's like all... a club. It's like a secret club. Yeah. Which is interesting. How do you think that plays into like the success of a dating app when it becomes more of like a, a club as opposed to open to everybody? See, I think that's the two sides of the coin is that it's nice that there's exclusivity, but then I feel like the people that are on it feel... Like too cool for school. Yeah, I don't know, entitled to... I don't. I do see a lot of crazy people on there like you know um industry big people but like i don't i don't i'm not one to ever really like care about stuff like that i i mean if you're a huge actress or whatever but you're not a nice person then at the end of the day you're just not a nice person Um, well then what do you what do you look for in a dating profile because i feel like now it's part of our world dating apps mm -hmm. so what like i think a lot of people are wondering you know on the female side like what is the initial like attraction to like make say oh this person is someone that I really actually want to get to know I mean I think dating apps in general have condensed it initially obviously to appearance which is a big component it's the of initial dating. it's like the yeah. first spark. are you attracted to the person yeah. um biology there is that this Netflix show that I just started watching called love is blind yes um, I've seen fascinating that fascinating because it's changed the whole dynamic of that they're yeah. not allowed to see what the person looks like just getting into that um but i mean yeah the first thing is you know appearance are they is it someone that i'm attracted to but then i i look for the like you know the quick like witty banter that someone yeah you can tell instantly if someone just like vibes with you or like I, I it's always like the if either person is just like hey and you're like hey and then it's just oh. like and How's you wait, it going? Like, and then you're just like, back. yeah, it's good. Like, any plans you for the have weekend? To like, I with want emojis. like a, I want like a weird question at the beginning that I can fire back with, or I'll ask them like a kooky thing. And like, I'd rather show my weird side like right at the beginning and see if they can, you know, swing back than just have like a boring conversation. To make the conversation 
as much of like a real world conversation as you can. Like show your personality. Yeah. I think a lot of times people play it safe and it's more so, you know what I look like? We'll meet up later and whatever. But I think that's how people get ghosted on dating apps. Well, here's what I've realized, especially from Raya, is that I think, and maybe, I mean, across the board with other stuff too, is that so many, I've heard this on the guy side too from women, that so many women and guys just want to match with people Mm -hmm. just to feel, it's almost like a dopamine hit of like, oh, I match, like it's good. And then nobody actually wants to take the time and like, okay, we've been talking for a bit. Let's like make an effort to... What nights are you free? This, that. If it does go to that point, I've noticed so many times that people will, and I've been guilty of this too, so maybe I have to admit that, but that like the day will come and Mm -hmm. then you'll just be like, I'm just not, like it's, I don't, I'm not feeling this anymore. It's intimidating to meet someone in person. Yeah. You know, like that's all there was back in, like back in the day, there's no date. Like you just go to like a library or a bar. You had to be like, Hey, but now, you know, like now all, it's just a bunch of pictures. All awkward, you, you know. Yeah. And I'm the worst at that. Meeting people at bars. Yes. I feel like I can see you just like casually leaning. No, on the bar no. With like a scotch. N- no, with shaking a <laughs> scotch, just hey, smelling hey. it, just staring from the but other. But do you end. think? Do you think because dating apps are such a big thing now? Do you think people have lost the ability to? Like start something in the real world, or maybe it's just not on the top I've of people's I've never had minds. it. Like, yeah. I, I, it always has to be like really like the 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 girl has to give me a lot of vibes for me to be like, okay, I know. Like, I, maybe it's just a big fear of like rejection. rejection. Yeah, but like, I I've never been. I mean, the guys that can just walk up and you know be like, you know, it would look good on you, me. <laughs> you know? like, I will say though, the guy that goes up to all the girls at the bar you have to think if he's coming up to me he's coming up to other people well i always just think like it, there's a fine line about that because i just think it's so aggressive like lines are like you know uh, i think it's romantic you... and i would hope that i'd meet someone in person <laughs> i'm honestly very intimidated to go back on dating apps i don't even know if that's something that i want to do mm. you know and so I mean, I'm working with this dating app called Scene, and it's more so, it feels kind of more old-fashioned because everything's so transparent and out there. You can do video chats on it, um, which I do want to get into, mm-hmm. video chatting. I almost feel like as soon as you match with somebody, start yeah, the video chat, like the idea. first thing. Because it just like really breaks the wall down. Yeah, and you can get to know someone's personality more. You know. But I feel like pe- like people would be too nervous to do it, and they just like deny it. Well, yes, but at the same time, it's a curiosity. And you know that, because the, there's also the fact of, is this person a catfish? Like, are they someone that's real or are other that's pictures? That's the one like, benefit of Raya is that everyone's legitimate. Yeah, because um, you never know now, because there's, I think there's so much, so many people on dating apps now that there, you can be anyone you want to be, mm-hmm. especially in social media, you know? Yikes. I, I've definitely had some catfish situations really? on other apps. Oh, yeah. Do tell. Well, also, people have told me that I'm being the catfisher. Oh, they think you're a catfish. No, no, no. Like, other people have sent me DMs on Instagram like, hey, screenshot of this, just wanted to let you know you're on Grindr. And I'm like, and no, I'm not. That's my Um, sister. The same thing happened to her, but it was like a dating app in Germany. Like, people will steal your face. And I wonder what the reason is behind it. I don't understand the point it. of that. Because, like, what are you going to do? Like, what, you're going to plan to to meet up, and then the person's going to be like, hey, by the way, you're fa- I'm, I'm fake. a 50-year-old man. It could be, like, because people want to be a part of, like, the game of it, and it has become maybe more so a game as opposed to, like, a genuine way of how to really find somebody. Mm. You know? So it's like, oh, I want this is my player. You know? This is my avatar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just what it's like, what it's what it would be like to date as that person exactly <sighs> or some people i've heard that the main reason why someone will catfish is because they're trying to see if their significant other is cheating or you know and then they get kind of get caught up in it Yikes. so that's like another that's point too. Crazy. all right so we're going to have a quick break but when we come back we have some people who have some questions for sam we're gonna get the guy's perspective so stay tuned Hello, everybody. We are back to Down to Date. I have my ex-boyfriend, Sam Meyerson, in the podcast studio. (laughs) And we had some people reach out to Sam to ask, you know, to get inside the guy's mind about dating apps, dating in general. 
Um, okay, so our first question is... Okay, lay it on me. How to bring up the subject of what are we without scaring him off? It's been four months. Four months is a long time. That's what I was just going to say. Four months is a long time. Um, I would almost feel like the what are we conversation would even come before that. Yeah. Um, but it's been four months, she's saying, in her relationship now. Uh -huh. like, how should she bring it up to him? I would straight up just ask. Um, I mean, four months, you, you are hopefully pretty comfortable with the person. Um, yeah. I would just sit down with a drink with them and be like, hey, like this is an important conversation. Drink is key. Yeah, because it might get <laughs> rough. Really just um, loose it up. But I would not do it over text and I would not do it over the phone. That is an in-person conversation um, to have. And be straight up. Hey, I want to know, like, what are we? Especially if, I mean, if she's asking what are we, she clearly wants something substantial. So if that's what you want, um, I would be forward with it. I think it's often a thing to be afraid to ask because you can lose something. Yeah, but but you better to know now than later. And if that person isn't on the same page, then you'd want you know, to know. You, yeah, yeah. And I think it, I mean, look, you can't you can't avoid that kind of conversation. I think being in an exclusive relationship, if that's what you want should be discussed because then later down the line it's going to get super messy yeah i would almost bring that up like well sometimes it always doesn't come into conversation but almost right at the beginning like hey what are you looking for um because mm -hmm. yeah you don't want to waste four months of your time with someone if you really like the person and then they it's not reciprocated i think that's what i learned also in my last relationship is to not be afraid to say what you want in the future like Marriage is something that I want, like I, of course. or I want to have a serious relationship, or I, I, you know, I think I used to be really afraid of that mm -hmm. because I would, I would feel like if I said it, it would make me seem needy. No, I mean, it, it shouldn't. It should be a mature conversation to have. I mean, the subject. I mean, look, you don't on the first date, you don't want to be like, so I want three kids and yeah. like that could be a little much but like three kids a whole band of weenie dogs <laughs> <laughs> a truck of weenies yes. um no but you want to know but i think it's i think you just feel the point with more serious stuff like that where that comes into play like hey now that we are kind of and maybe that should happen right after your serious conversation of yeah. like uh, are we heading down the same road Yes, yes. Okay, well, this, just so you know, is kind of what I want in the future. And if that doesn't line up too, then better to know now than like Later when you're looking for a proposal and the guy finally admits like, hey, I've never, never talked saw about this. In this my future. But like, I've never wanted kids. And you're just like, I'm sorry, what? You know? Dare I say first date maybe? What? Ask where they are in their life and where you're going. Yeah. I almost feel like don't waste your time. It just, it, it depends how it's brought up. Yeah. yeah. Question number two. Okay. Why do you think it's important to stay friends with your ex? Because, uh, I mean, you both cared about each other at one point and still do, you know? I I would never not want to be friends with you, you know? Yeah. Especially, as we said, you meet the person's family and then get to know them and, and care for them. And, yeah, that doesn't go away just because you break up, hopefully. You can also learn a lot about where in the relationship it went wrong like maybe like a couple of years down the line say how like why do we dissect why you broke up and maybe say there are there things that i can improve on mm -hmm. you know or like learn from it in a more direct way because there's probably some things that you're not aware of i mean thinking back i i just i, I mean i don't remember like a whole lot about it but yeah. i i remember it was just timing yeah that's and a sometimes huge factor there, sometimes there isn't an answer yeah all right, so here's a question about dating apps. Um, what should and shouldn't be in your dating profile? Okay. <laughs> Let me break I have it down for you. A lot of pet peeves with this. Because um, just recently, this is one example. Okay, these are your five to six, seven, whatever pictures that people are seeing for the first time, and it's really quick. And some people just like put the strangest stuff up like and this is your first initial like reaction of the person. 
An it's example would be. It's intimidating to show your personality. Like, how do you show who no, you are? No, definitely, definitely you know? show your personality. But this, this is kind of an example. Well, one, a big pet peeve is your first picture is a group of people. Oh, which That's one? Crazy, is yeah. She? Like, <laughs> your first picture has to be just you. In my opinion, it's yeah. really. And then, like, sometimes it'll be a group of people. Then you'll go to the next picture and it's still like a couple of people and you're just like I don't want to go on like a rat race to find out wh- who, who you are, are. it's like yeah. a mystery or don't um, blur the faces out oh that's of weird the person too that's of like next your to friend you. yeah. like the emoji on the face that's weird yeah. yeah it's like this is someone that I used to date but this picture is great of oh me. I thought you were talking about just their friends no but some you I've know, seen both you, yeah. yeah you don't know like maybe I've seen people put like the emoji face or like just blur the face out or blur everything around the picture besides them yeah yeah, Photoshop skills. There's one that I saw quite recently. I'm totally all for personality, but I think personality should like put your good photos at the beginning and then personality should come towards the end, whether it's like quirky photos, or whatever. Yeah. My example with this was a bit ago. The girl's first picture was a selfie with her and she was wearing a fake mustache but it looked very real. Like oh. her fake mustache looked very real. Skills. And it, like... It just like, I don't know, it was just jarring and it like wasn't, it wasn't attractive and it wasn't like, it wasn't at the point where it should be like a funny photo yet. So it was just like, it just threw me off for all the rest. Where should the funny photo be? Towards the end, in my opinion. I would say number three. Yeah, sure. Number three. First one is like a headshot. first reaction like should not be like something like, oh, jarring. Like. Yeah. Well, okay. Let's, let's, Let's like lay out the kinds of pictures you should put on a dating app. Okay. So. Say you have five. The first one, what should the first picture be? Wholesome, nice. Wholesome. Good lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Define a wholesome picture. Uh, you Maybe know. holding a puppy. Grandma's there. <laughs> yeah. You, you say you can have other people in the photo. Yeah, but they blur, know it's, they know it's not grandma out. and don't That's blur true. grandma's face. Don't blur grandma's face out. Um, no, just like when maybe like a good selfie or close up. Yeah, close. Smiling. Yes. Yeah. Um, photo number two. I think there should be some sort of full body shot. Okay. That's um, fair. Because then you can, you know, you, you see the gr- face Girls now. equally want that too. Height is, I know, a big yeah. factor in women's dating. Um, you need something in the background to compare, like, how tall. I guess, like, there's five bricks. And I went online and each brick is, like, three inches tall. So if you put all the bricks together, this person is... What? See, height is a big factor yeah Measuring not gonna bricks. i mean i i feel like i've done that before <laughs> really i mean you know i guess it's like all the information you can grab you try to figure out what, what information so that's you can why get. it's important yeah yeah all right so you have your your wholesome wholesome your full body full body uh third i think should either be yeah quirky funny or maybe showcase the personality showcase what you like to do maybe it's a uh, uh rock climbing picture or like, like a that. beach picture you're hiking swimming with sharks or something whatever that's impressive adventurous yeah i do i think it's really funny whenever i look at guys dating profiles there's always a picture of a, like a guy catching a fish i don't have that you but didn't have that but, but that I, is so interesting often, i almost feel like it's like i can provide for you oh you know he's a gatherer he's a gatherer well a hunter, hunter. actually He's a hunter and a gatherer. He's a hunter gatherer. and a gatherer. There's also berries in the distance. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's, and also the traveling photo, which I love, okay. like the traveling yeah. photos on there. Mm-hmm. But Machu Picchu is a huge, a huge one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys are running to Machu Picchu yeah. right They're now like, this to is get my, their photo. I think Machu Picchu, <laughs> Picchu pictures are like one of the dating photos because I've seen a lot of those. Mm. What are ones that you see like with females a lot? Definitely, yeah, the travel photo. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of like, hey, here's me in Paris or here's me in Greece. Which is great. Great. Being well you travel. Traveled. I like it. I, I also am looking for someone that's well traveled. So, sure. Yeah. Um, it just depends. It depends on the person. Some are quirky throughout the entire thing, some are adventurous throughout the entire thing. And that's almost like, oh man, I don't know if I can keep up with you. There was this one girl that was like, it was diving with sharks and then it was jumping out of a plane and then it was this. And I was like, I was like, I have anxiety. Like, <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't keep up. Um, it's, like, it's like a spy person. Yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a range. Why, why a guy wouldn't respond to you, but looks at all your posts within five minutes of posting. So this is yeah, when your social media friends for now. this. 
Oh, I'm oh. guessing it's like when you're social media friends and you post something in your story uh-huh. and you can see who sees your stories. Someone who looks at all. I'm, this is actually something I want to debunk. Are you looking at. I wonder if guys are looking at people's stories just because they're looking at everybody's stories mm-hmm. or if it's like there are certain people I prioritize at looking at their well, stories. Instagram will put the people you look at more at the beginning of your story. So it's the people that you're up. looking at more. Mm hmm. It's not necessarily that they're looking at you the most. No, no, no. I'm saying on their profile. Oh, you're who right. Who you look at the most will show up at the front. So that, I would say, maybe he's interested. Wait, so what's the question? So the question is why a guy wouldn't respond to you, but looks, oh, it's this person didn't respond to her, but looks at all your posts within five minutes of posting. Mm. Yeah, I need a bit more context for that. Like he's it's, not he's not responding to what did you DM him? Is it did you guys match and he didn't respond on a dating app? Did do you yeah. text him? I don't there's a, there's a lot I with that. Almost, I I am always on the side of if he wants you, you will know. Mm-hmm. Um so the f- And then if fact, he doesn't he'll make, he'll make that, an excuse. Yeah. I I wouldn't focus too much on the fact that he's looking at your Instagram stories because Look, if I genuinely like a girl, she will know. I will make a plan. That's another thing. And know a good plan from a bad plan. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's very different. If I really like a girl, I will say, hey, I would love to take you out to wherever, X, Y, and Z, plan a nice night versus what are you up to tonight? That's a We should chill and watch a movie or something (laughs) like that. Netflix Um, and chill. It's just, well, there's nothing wrong with that no, after there's nothing wrong. dates down the line. Yes. But if I really like a girl, I'm not, If I, especially now with the older that I've gotten, if I really like a girl, I probably wouldn't even ask you to come over until like down the line now. Yeah. That's just my mindset at the moment right now. But, yeah, but someone about, making but, details about a plan, like actual, ma- actually making a solid plan in the future. Well, you want to make it, if you if the guy likes you, he'll, he'll at least try to make it special if he's been trained properly. I don't know. <laughs> Train your men. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. So here's another question. Mm-hmm. If you tried to stay friends with someone and he refused, why? Oh, man. I just, well, maybe it's too well, difficult, I would say. For them or to remain maybe friends. he's just kind of a jerk. I don't know why. Uh, if you want to be friends with him, and I mean, I'm assuming this is someone that they you dated, date. um, and they don't want to be friends with you. I don't know. What did you do? But oh. uh, I don't know. I mean, it's true. It definitely need more context to it. But I would say, if someone isn't putting the effort towards being your friend, are there's, they worth the effort? There's only one ex that I don't really speak to. Oh, and we all have that one because of some crazy stuff that went down yeah yeah so that's understandable yeah but i feel like with this person i would i would say if you just broke up give it a little bit of time you know i feel like when we first broke up it was difficult to be oh hey let's just hang out and talk and be fine for a bit yeah Yeah, you need to have some space in between to establish more so like a friendship Mm -hmm. and then go into it i would just say maybe this these few months you know take a little backseat oh yeah especially if they just broke up maybe give it a bit yeah yeah come back around give a little rest or maybe they're dating someone else which is understandable yeah and then the jealousy comes in but i would hope even then that my new relationship is strong and comfortable enough to say hey that's just my ex that she's a great friend of mine and i care about her still but i'm not gonna so you think it's okay to be friends with your exes or i mean it's difficult because I talk about, we actually do talk about this a lot. When you are friends with your ex and one of you starts dating again, Mm -hmm. like, how do you feel about that? How do you feel if your girlfriend was talking to her ex? My, I would be, look, I hope I, I hope vice versa too, that I have a strong enough relationship and there's enough trust to know that they're just friends. And I, I think it's nice that, I mean, if, look, I would, I feel like I would do so much research to like see like their past you know like who broke up with who like how long ago was it yeah well but also like even if it was somewhat fresh if my new girlfriend was like oh i don't want you hanging out with kendall i I don't know if i would want to there's deeper issues to the reasons of that like i don't know if i would want to date that person because there's already trust issues there yeah you know I think trust is like one of the most 
important things in a relationship and that comes with communication too yeah because it, it boils down to intention and if you communicate your intention effectively then that's what establishes trust you know mm -hmm. i feel like being friends with your ex if there's no context behind it and you're like oh we're just talking without like fully describing things then that leaves room for doubt which is understandable yeah but you know I'm always uh, in favor of being friendly with my exes. My most recent ex is my next door neighbor, um, that, which that could be awkward. Was very difficult at the beginning when we broke up, but now we're literally best friends. And I mean, I think it's, I mean, why not? Like, if you can stay friends with people that you genuinely Obviously you care like their about, personality. Yeah, you're able well, to. Well, that's be in a why you started dating them. them. Yeah, right? yeah. All right, let's see. All right, so. <laughs> This question, talking about our relationship, is okay. who broke up with who? Do you still secretly harbor any feelings and hope to get back? <laughs> when we broke up, I honestly think it was 100% mutual. Yeah, it was um, It was pretty mutual. It was just... I was working like 16-hour days. Yeah, I just moved back to Los Angeles. Yeah, you had a crazy job at that time yeah. where we really weren't seeing each other a lot. Um, but it was always the the thing that came back to like you were never quite ready at that time to like be in a relationship and then it just you didn't have your feet in LA and you were just kind of all over the place and it just got to a point where it's like hey I don't let's just kind of yeah cut it, it off it boils down to like the yeah. time in your life you know yeah I mean I, I I don't necessarily think you find the right one um by just finding the right one running into them like that's mm -hmm. the right one I feel like you also have to be the right one for them as well and be fair enough to be in a place in your life where you can, you know, make yourself the right one, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's something that um, I definitely learned from like all my dating history. And um, we're not answering the second part of that question. <laughs> <laughs> just I just got out of a relationship. All right, so that is all the time we have for questions. Thank you so much for sending them in. And thank you so much, Sam. You're very welcome. For answering the viewers' questions. I thought they were great questions. Thank you They're so much. They're wonderful questions. And, I mean, good luck to everybody going out in the dating world. I feel like it's an intimidating field right now. It is. It's rough out there. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. You shouldn't be. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah. But the grass is always greener. When you're in a relationship, you're like, oh, it'd be, you know... If it's not going well in the relationship, you're like, just being single would be so much fun. It's not. Oh, no. my God. I'm a relationship person. That's Same. what I have learned. Yeah. So anyway, not to end on a pessimistic <laughs> note. I'm sure. You know, I'm just being a pessimist maybe because I just ended. And it seems really intimidating with all the dating apps, with like going out in all these places. But there's hope. I think when you find it, it's amazing. And it's out there because, I mean, people have it. So, you know, that's a nice note. Actually, one thing I want to end on, Sam, if you can give me one piece of advice about love what would it be oh man be open to it and be yourself because you are pretty great don't change for anybody else hell yes <laughs> thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you next week on down to date thank you Bye -bye.